Hello and welcome everybody. In these two videos we will discuss section 5.2.2 of the book and this explains how we can apply bootstrap estimators to statistical inference. Let's see what we get. What I want to discuss here is applications of bootstrap estimation to parameter estimators in statistics. And just to be clear what I mean by parameter estimator, what I mean by this is a distribution can be often described in terms of parameters, like the normal distribution has mean and variance, and the Poisson distribution has this weight lambda and so on. And in general, these are denoted by theta. So let theta be a parameter of a distribution P, and that theta is a property of P. And then an estimator for theta is a map theta hat, where you can plug in some data, and which gives you an approximate value for theta. So it's a map theta hat such that theta hat of a random sample x1 up to xn is approximately equal to theta when the x1 up to xn correspond to p with parameter theta and typically they are independent. So there is a lot going on here. First, on the most basic level, theta hat is a function of the data. That's a statistic in technical terms. And if we plug in data, then we get back the parameter. And that relies, of course, on the data actually corresponding to the parameter. That's what I wrote here. And the one thing one needs to get used to a bit is to test what a parameter estimator is when uses random data. So for doing theory, you will need to look at random variables. And so what I write here is we have random variables distributed according to P with parameter theta. So to make this notation here and there consistent, I should probably write p with parameter theta of p equals theta so such that this theta and that theta is the same. One of the most basic examples is an estimator for the mean. So example, if x distributed according to p, then mu equals the expectation of x is the true mean, so that mu is an example of the theta. And the standard estimator would be mu hat. If I write it in this form, then it becomes a function of x1 up to xn. And that normally is just the average, the 1 over n, some i from 1 to n xi. And that is an estimator for mu. And when you learn about this and do analysis, what you do is mu hat applied to capital X1 up to capital Xn. So that's now a random sample. And one can show that that's an unbiased estimator. So on average, the expectation of mu hat when I plug in random data equals mu. And as I get more data, I get better. That is normally quantified by saying the variance of mu hat if I plug in random data is variance of x divided by n. So that's how one would analyze this estimator mu hat in statistical theory. And just to say this again, these x1 to xn, they are what we earlier called IID copies of x, so they are independent samples from p with the same mean. And if we would not do that, this and that statement would make no sense. So if we plug in numbers instead of random variables, then mu hat with the values is just a number, and there would be no variance and it would make little sense to consider the expectation. So this whole approach, and that's the standard approach, requires this trick that we plug in random variables in here. There are various ways how such estimators can be constructed. So for the mean, this is the standard form, and for the variance, the sample variance would be the standard form. So that is 1 over n minus 1, some i from 1 to n, xi minus x bar squared. But already here, the situation is less clear. One could have 1 over n instead of 1 over n minus 1 here. And one could ask, why is the n minus 1 here? So these were two examples. So in the first example, theta was the mean. For the second example, theta was the variance. And for both cases, they are standard estimators. But for general parameters, like if you have more complicated distributions which are characterized by the kurtosis or by some rates, or I don't know what, then often it's not entirely clear what is the correct estimator. And 
There are various recipes how you can construct estimators. There are maximum likelihood estimators and so on. And for bootstrap estimation, the one where the theory works best is what's called a plug-in estimator. So let's just write that definition. The plug-in estimator for a parameter theta is given by theta hat of x1 to xn equals theta of p x star, where this x stands for x1 up to xn. So what does this mean? So first, this symbol p x star we have seen in the last group of videos, that is the empirical distribution of the data x1 to xn. So if we evaluate a plug-in estimator for given data, the first thing we need to do is we need to find the empirical distribution for this data. And then this theta of the empirical distribution that relates to the notation here. So that means we take the corresponding parameter of the empirical distribution. So if we would be estimating the mean, then we would take the mean of the empirical distribution. If we would estimate the variance, we would take the variance of the empirical distribution. If we would be estimating the kurtosis, we would take the kurtosis of the empirical distribution, and so on. So let's just do an example. The plug-in estimator for the mean is the mean of the empirical distribution. And now we need to just think back, what did we learn about the empirical distribution? So the mean we get easiest if we take a random variable distributed according to the empirical distribution. And then the mean of the empirical distribution is just the expectation of x star. And the expectation of x star is one of the things we worked out in the last group of videos, and it was rather simple. It was 1 over n sum i from 1 to n xi, so it was just the sample average. If you think back, you probably remember the derivation was not quite as straightforward as this formula looked. We had these complications relating to repeated values, but whatever, this was the result. And now, using the definition of a plug-in estimator, the plug-in estimator of the mean we get by taking the empirical distribution, and then the mean of the empirical distribution. So, what we get is mu hat of x1 up to xn is the mean of the empirical distribution, which is what we have just worked out, is 1 over n sum i from 1 to n xi. So it just makes sense. They chose the plug-in estimator for the mean equals the usual estimate. That's good. We got back something which we now make sense. Similarly, if we do the plug-in estimator for the variance, then we know what to do. Sigma hat squared up to x1 up to xn is sigma squared px star, so the variance of the empirical distribution which means it's the variance of x star, because that is distributed according to the empirical distribution. And that, I think we have worked out, but just in case we haven't, let me just write that again. That is expectation of x star squared minus expectation of x star squared, which is 1 over n sum i from 1 to n xi squared, minus 1 over n sum i from 1 to n xi in the result squared. And I'm leaving out a few steps, but you can check this. What you get here is 1 over n sum i from 1 to n xi minus x bar squared. So the logic of the left out steps is not very difficult, but it's a bit tedious. So what we got, does this make sense? It kind of makes sense, but you see it's not what I said earlier was the normal estimator for the variance. The difference is just now I got 1 over n, and the normal estimator has 1 over n minus 1. So it has not this fancy n minus 1 instead of n, which is a correction people apply to make the estimator unbiased. They chose the plug-in estimator for a quantity is not guaranteed to be unbiased, but again we got something which at least makes sense even if it is not unbiased. So that is what a plug-in estimator is. Using this notation, there are two different things I want to show you. And the first one that corresponds to section 5.2.2.1 is the bootstrap estimate of the bias. So let's just remember, the bias we have discussed before, 
bias of a general estimator theta hat is the expectation of theta hat. And I'll be pedantic here and plug in the random variables. So that's what we need to do. Minus the truth, so in our notation here, that it's theta of p. So that's the bias. And normally you do some theory and then you derive theoretical results for the bias. For example, the estimator for the mean we discussed is unbiased, one can show. And the standard estimator for the variance, which I showed you with the 1 over n minus 1, is unbiased. And the one with the 1 over n we have just seen has a slight bias. It slightly underestimates variances. So in general, it's a difficult task to assess the bias, so you need to know some probability. And I want to show you how one can estimate the bias from data using bootstrap estimation. So aim is estimate the bias from data. And what that means is we first use data to compute the estimated value of the parameter. So if we have any estimator, we can just plug in the data x1 up to xn. That gives us a point estimate. That is the normal procedure, how you use an estimator. But the new thing will be that at the same time, we want to estimate the bias of the estimator. So the notation I will use later will be bias hat star. And we will learn how we get this expression. That will be an estimate for bias theta hat. And if you think about it this way, that seems pretty miraculous that that can be done. Not only do we get our estimate, but in case we have a maybe not so good estimator, we need to worry about bias. And somehow this method promises to give you a handle of the bias at the same time. And you can guess that is maybe too good to be true. And really one needs an extra assumption. So the assumption one needs here is that theta hat is a plug-in estimator. That gives us a bit of extra knowledge to work with. And it turns out, I will show you, this is enough to get an estimate of the bias together with the estimate of the value itself. So let's see what we can do. So we need to remember the bootstrap principle from the previous lecture. The bootstrap principle tells us how do we obtain the bootstrap estimate of any quantity. And it consists of three rules. The first rule is random variables are replaced with bootstrap samples, so samples from the empirical distribution. Any reference to the distribution itself is replaced with a reference to the empirical distribution. And as a consequence of this, any expectations are replaced with expectations with respect to the empirical distribution. So if we apply that to the bias, the bias of theta hat is expectation of theta of x1 up to xn minus the parameter of the distribution. So if we apply the bootstrap principle, then we get our bootstrap estimator of the bias. And the rules are expectations are replaced with expectations with respect to the empirical distribution. So we get this here. Then the theta is a function, nothing we can do. But the x1 to xn are replaced with the bootstrap sample. So that is x1 star up to xn star. And here is one last substitution to make. We can only see this because I used my somewhat non-standard notation. The parameter is a property of the distribution. So I wrote theta of p to say we are looking at this parameter of the distribution p. And I did this for the next step. Namely here, this p needs to be replaced with a px star. So we take the same parameter, but the rule said every reference to the distribution of the x is replaced with a, with a reference to the empirical distribution. So here, when it says the mean of p, we need the mean of the empirical distribution. In general, if it says parameter theta for p, we need parameter theta for the empirical distribution. Good. So that is just formalistically applying the rules we have learned for bootstrap estimators to the definition of the bias. And now you can already spot how we can use the assumption that theta hat is a plug-in estimator. That just reminds ourselves what that means. A plug-in estimator is determined by taking the parameter in question of the empirical distribution. And that's exactly what's happening here. We have a parameter of the empirical distribution. So that thing here is the plug-in estimator. So 
here we can write theta hat of x1 up to xn. And I've just spotted, I have forgotten a few hats here. These thetas are all the estimator whose bias we are testing. So theta hat here, theta hat here, theta hat here. And this new theta hat comes, since we know theta hat is a plug-in estimator, so we know that must equal this. Good. And that is already the definition. So the bootstrap estimator of the bias is this, rather the second line. And now there is one more step to do. Namely, that is one of the cases where often it is difficult to work out that expectation. In theory, we have all the knowledge to do that because these are distributed according to the empirical distribution of the data and we assume we have the data. But in practice, that could be a complicated function of n independent copies of this data. So that's not so easy. And we do what I said at the end of the last lecture. We estimate that using Monte Carlo. So in case this expectation cannot be evaluated analytically, we use a Monte Carlo estimate. And then we get bias hat star of theta hat is 1 over n sum j from 1 to n theta hat of, and now I need lots of these, so I pop a j here and a j here, minus theta hat of little x1 up to little xn. And here we need to generate little n times capital N IID samples from the empirical distribution. So where x i upper star j from the empirical distribution are independent and identically distributed for i from 1 up to little n and j, that's the index for the Monte Carlo sample, from 1 to capital N. This is what people use. So let's have just a quick experiment in R to try that out. First thing we need to do is to pick an estimator. And we know for that to work, we need to pick a plug-in estimator. And here I want to use the one we just derived, namely the plug-in estimator for the variance. So that as a function of x, so n is how much data do we have. Then we need the mean, that was x bar in the formula. And then we need to return the sum of x minus m squared. And that thing is divided by n. So this is our plug-in estimator for the variance. Let's just try that out. If I take, say, 100 values, then theta hat of x gives 1.3. Let's try that again. 0.99, 1.05. And what I want to do is I think I want to do a quick histogram just that we see what we get. So So if that's right, the bias is minus sigma squared over n, then this should be centered at 1 minus 1 over 100. So that visually looks shifted a bit further to the left, but I believe that is just because the distribution is a bit asymmetric and just the peak is shifted to the left. You see here when I take the mean of h, it comes out very much as 0.99. So that is what we expect because of the bias. So the estimate on average is shifted to the left by 0.1. Okay, so that is how we could have done things in the Monte Carlo setting. We will know the distribution of our samples. For bootstrap sampling, the setup is, we assume we just have our one lot of data. So let's just do one here and let's pretend we don't know how that was generated. So normally we would just be given the data and normally it would not have as tidy a distribution as a normal distribution. So let's just take this data and see how we can estimate the bias of this. The first thing we need to sort out is we need to be able to generate bootstrap samples. I just write myself a function which generates random bootstrap samples. n is going to be how many we want. And bootstrap samples, we said we take a random sample from x and we do it so that we have the uniform distribution on all the indices, so each element has the same chance of being picked. So let's see how that works. Sample is the function to take. Take the sample of the specified size from elements of x using either with or without replacement. So x goes here, 
size is n and we want with replacement we can get the same element twice so replace is true that's easy enough i can just write this like that so our bootstrap 10 gives us 10 samples and they are obtained by picking elements from this long list at random so this 0 0.05972 is hidden somewhere in this list here it is so we pick that element at random for the first one that's how we generate our bootstrap samples and our point estimate we should probably have done that first that is rather straightforward so that is theta hat of x that is what we estimate for the variance and now that came out bigger than the truth but normally if we do bootstrap sampling we don't know the truth but that's what we got now let's estimate the bias using the formula so we need to pick a Monte Carlo sample size and then for j in 1 to n we generate a bootstrap sample so that is done using r bootstrap and now we need little n here and i haven't set this yet let's set this to 100 and then we do theta hat star maybe which is theta hat applied to x star and then we need to average these values so I think I just sum them up here. So say sum is zero, then sum is sum plus theta hat star and bias hat star. The bootstrap estimate for the bias is the average. So it's the sum over n. So let's see what we get. I just run this through. That takes a while, you see, because we do a million samples where each requires to generate 100 bootstrap samples, but still 100 million we can still do. So bias head star is 1.03 and that is not the right answer because I forgot to subtract the true values. So that is our bootstrap estimate of the bias. And you see, I think by a stroke of good luck or otherwise we are extremely accurate, the theoretical bias is minus 0 0.01, sigma, minus sigma squared over n. So while we didn't get the actual value very well, we did get the bias quite well. So I run the whole thing again, just that we get a second instance, but normally you can't do that. I do that only for demonstration purposes. Normally everything until here is fixed. So you are given your numbers, n is just how many numbers you were given, and you can only do this bootstrap estimate of the bias and the point estimate once. So normally you have no choice because you don't have more data, only because I'm doing here a made up example with simulated data, I can do it twice to try out how well it works. So let's try that. So I generate new data. That's the step I could normally not do. Then I get the point estimates. This time it's too low, quite a bit too low, but you saw the histograms earlier. It is in the range of what can happen. And now we can see what we get for the bootstrap estimate of the bias. So let me evaluate this. Bias head star. Here we are. It's still negative, but we see now that we got the nearly exact answer the first time around was really good luck. But still, that is not too far. Again, minus 0 0.008 and minus 0 0.01 are close to each other. So that actually seems to work quite well. Good. So that is how we can use bootstrap sampling to estimate the bias of an estimator. And that also finishes the first part of this video. And in the next part, we'll learn about estimating the standard error of an estimator instead. So, see you then.